morning, folks. Welcome to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer, your host, and we're in luck because we're at the Hal Ross Mill on the campus of Kansas State University, and we're going to be speaking to Sean Teeley, the operations manager, about the flour mill and, and basically how flour mill works. I think you're going to enjoy it, so stay tuned. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Good morning, folks. Welcome to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer, your host. And with us, we have Sean Teeley, the plant manager here at the flour mill at K-State. And uh, Sean, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. And and uh, kind of walking us through this uh, the mill here. So kind of tell us a little bit of uh, a little bit about it. Uh, it's brand well it's new about two or three years ago, and and uh, kind of yeah. tell us a little bit about it. Well, thank you, Jim. Um, so two or three years would would be nice, but this mill was actually built in 2005. So this is oh <laughs> the Hal Ross flour mill. Um, Time flies when you're having fun. Yes, it does. It's actually replacing a. The older school mill that's in uh, main campus in Schellenberger Hall. I remember so that one. Mm -hmm. This is a fully automated, uh, it was state-of-the-art mill, still is uh, very new, very state-of-the-art compared to uh, a lot of flour mills, but um, age-wise, you know, going on 12, almost 12 years old, uh, so there are newer newer things out there, but we're very fortunate to have, to have this uh, milling location here at Kansas State University. What's the purpose of the, the mill here? At at K-State? So this uh, mill is primarily a school mill, so we use it um, most of the time for teaching. So we're training undergraduate students in the milling science and management program how to, uh, how to take raw grain and mill them down into a base product or finished product. Um, primarily here, the, the flour mill, we're taking uh, wheat and milling it into, uh, into flour. So what happens with that flour after it's milled? Is it sold? Uh, some of it's sold through our Milling Science Club locally uh, to local businesses or, or people that know about it. Um, most of it is donated though. I, I like to say we're here to make quality flour millers and not as much uh, quality flour for commercial scale baking. So Sean, this is kind of a one of a kind type of uh, uh, milling operation and attached to a university. Yes. Um, so this is pretty unique. Uh, the mill itself is a commercial flour mill, so we can commercially produce flour if we, uh, if we went down that route. Uh, the program, though, is very unique. So Kansas State University is the only school in the U.S. that offers a, a bachelor degree of science in milling science. So uh, very unique for a university to have a commercial flour mill tied to it um, for training purposes like this. So uh, what's, the, uh, what's the capacity? How does this mill uh, stand in relationship to say other mills in, in the state or, or locally? Yep, so we would call this mill in the U.S. a 400 hundredweight per day mill um, or 40,000 pounds of flour per day we could produce here. Um, Size-wise relative to commercial mills we are 20 to 30 times smaller um, <laughs> depending on which mill you're comparing against. Okay. So that's the, that's the difference of educational effort versus uh, monetary or economic effort, so to speak. Correct. Um, we could go bigger, but the bigger you go, the more wheat you, gotta, you have to use, the more cost you have associated with teaching. So there's, uh, there's drawbacks uh, to, to going larger as well as benefits um, training-wise. Okay. okay, Sean, we got to take a break. Folks, okay. stay with us. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsor. See you in a minute. To see this show and past episodes of Ag AM in Kansas, go online to agamincansas.com. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. 
Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego is driven by the spirit of American ingenuity. Come in for a new Chevrolet car, truck, or SUV. If we don't have exactly what you want, we'll find it for you. And we also have a great selection of used cars. We make sure you have an easy, fun, and transparent sales experience that saves you time and money. But if you want high-pressure salesmen and hours spent in the finance office, you'll just have to go elsewhere. Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're making car buying great again. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer. And uh, Sean Teeley didn't run off during that last break. He wanted to, but I held on to him. Sean, you're a, you're a farm boy from Norton County. Uh, um, how in the world did you get involved with grain science, milling, as opposed to going back to the farm and, and farming? Right? Yep. Well, Jim, uh, it's a good question. I, uh, I knew I wanted to go to K-State, and I wasn't sure what I was going to pursue at the time. Um, I heard about milling science through a friend of mine and uh, jumped into that field and, and stuck with it since. So uh, it's a pretty unique program, um, and it's not uh, well known um, throughout the world. A lot, of, a lot of our recruiting efforts do come from people that are in the milling industry and know about K-State. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, we have roughly 74 students right now in the program, uh, freshman through senior, and we only graduate about 15 to 20 students per year. So you're not flooding the market by any stretch of the imagination? Right? No, we are not. In <laughs> industry would love if we could provide uh, more students. Uh, currently, we've been 100% job placement for all of our students uh, out of the program since the 70s. So. Wow, that, that is so. So you're you're probably could throw a plug now for you know the uh, kids out there that are watching that hey come to K State and get into grain science, huh? Yes, grain science <laughs> is a uh, is very beneficial. Um, you know, it's harder and harder to get jobs these days. It seems like out of college, uh, milling science is definitely definitely uh, provided the job placement and also uh, very high starting salaries for for students. And what are we talking about on that? Uh, roughly sixty-five to seventy-five thousand per year, with a BS. With a Bachelor of Science, correct. That's pretty impressive. Yep. Now I've I've looked at that curriculum before, and and I was I was impressed with the uh, the rigor of it. Uh, yes, Jim. There's a lot of math and a lot of science that goes along with the uh, milling science curriculum. Um, the important thing to think about is we're making food for human consumption and uh, some food for animal consumption as well. So. Uh, it's very important for, for the students to, to learn everything that goes along with that to keep, uh, to keep the people and animals safe and produce healthy products. Right, that's a good point. Now, we, we think of a flour mill uh, just uh, in Kansas, a hard red winter wheat, but you're able to do more than just hard red winter wheat here. Correct. This mill was designed to mill all six classes of U.S. wheat, so we can mill the hard red winter wheat um, all the way to Durham wheat, spring wheats, and soft wheats. And you do corn and soybeans from time to time? We, uh, yes, we have experimented um, through changing sieves out in the sifters and doing some other manipulations with the mill. We've uh, successfully been able to mill sorghum, red and white sorghum, um, white and yellow corn, and some soybeans on, on the Hal Ross mill as well. And this is mainly uh, educational again, to, to, you know, get their, get their uh, hands dirty, so to speak. Correct. With the, uh, with the other grains, we're primarily teaching uh, the process and, and how you mill it differently, uh, efficiency-wise, aren't going to be as good on a, on a wheat flour mill when you're milling corn versus right. mills set up for those types of grains. Okay. Thanks, Sean. Yep. Hey, we've got to take a break. Folks, stay with us. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways. Of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. 
no matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. Sean Teeley, the operations manager here at the Flower Mill at K-State is with us. And uh, so Sean, kind of take us through the whole process from, from the grain that, that comes in. I mean, farmers think that they're, they're bringing in to the elevator or wherever, you know, perfectly clean grain, but uh -huh. it, it probably is not as good as they think. It, it's good, but not be, to be run through the mill, right? Correct, Jim. Uh, all, of the, all of the grain gets cleaned before it is milled, so uh, it's a pretty simple process to explain. All of the sciences get into, you know, the details when you're actually running the mill and optimizing your efficiencies. But uh, in general, the first thing we're doing is receiving the dirty grain from uh, the elevators or the farmers directly. Uh, the next step before milling would be cleaning. Okay. So all wheat will be cleaned through a number of different uh, cleaning pieces of equipment using different principles of separation. But our goal is to remove all what we call non-wheat material and non-millable wheat. So non-wheat material would be everything easy to see, gloves, cell phones, <laughs> Sticks I bet and that stems. does come through, doesn't it? It does. Rocks, uh, other grains, you know, corn or, or whatever it may be in with the wheat. So we'll remove all non-wheat material and then we'll remove non-millable wheat. So non-millable wheat is um, infested grain maybe uh, that has bugs that have bored into it, um, right. diseased wheat, um, if it, wheat that has mycotoxin or something like that on the soft wheat side. Um, <clears throat> So any, any non-millable wheat we would remove from the system uh, in the cleaning step. Okay, so then what's next? Uh, after cleaning, we condition. So uh, millers never want to accept wheat over 13 and a half or 14 percent moisture content for storability reasons. Mm -hmm. But after we have the wheat and we're ready, we're ready to, to mill it, it's been through the cleaning system, we'll do what we do, uh, what we call uh, conditioning. And we'll actually add moisture or add water to that wheat to raise that moisture content up. So you know exactly, before it go, when it goes into the conditioning process, you know exactly what the moisture is and how much water to add. Correct. Okay. Um, for a hard wheat, we typically like to mill it around 16 to 17% moisture content. Mm -hmm. That provides a couple of advantages. Um, it, so, uh, it toughens the bran layers or makes it more pliable and it softens the endosperm. So. Okay. For millers, their quality is all measured on how effectively they can remove the bran from the endosperm. Uh, the the uh, bran is a byproduct for, for millers when making white bread flour. Uh, if you're making whole wheat, whole wheat uh, flour, it's all milled back together. Um, it's separated initially and then put back in, right? Uh, there's a couple different ways to do it. Uh, that would be one of those, yes. Okay. So, so adding that water, uh, makes that brand hold together better so when we're grinding it it doesn't break apart and end up with the flour that way we can remove it from the system and then um, that endosperm mellows down or softens so when we grind it through the roller mills it breaks down into those uh, flour particle sizes easier okay we have to take it right folks stay with us we'll be right back after these words from our sponsor Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Buffalo Bill Cody earned his legendary title in Oakley. Bring the family and come celebrate Oakley's pioneering history and unique geography at two sites, the Buffalo Bill Cultural Center and the Fick Fossil Museum. Visit the Kansas State Corn Husking Contest and Festival on October 7th and 8th at the Buffalo Bill Cultural Center. Highways 83 and 40 and I-70 crisscross this hub of the Western Vista's historic highway. Day for the day, discover Oakley. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, 
renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities, big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. Sean Teeley, the operations manager here at the mill, is with us. And Sean, we, we got up to conditioning on that last segment and talked about that a little bit. So take us on from conditioning. All right, so um, after the water's added to the wheat and we've conditioned it, we give it a little bit of time, uh, up to 24 hours typically, for that water to absorb into the wheat kernel and then it goes straight to the milling process. So the milling process is where we're um, making the flour, if you would. That's where we're uh, grinding the wheat and uh, getting that finished flour. Okay. So it's uh, done through a few steps, but it's a gradual reduction process, so we're, gr we're very slowly and gradually opening up the grain kernel, breaking it apart. Um, that starts with what we call our brake systems, so the first uh, four to five roll stands is going to be opening up the wheat kernel and scraping away the endosperm from the bran layers. After that's accomplished, the bran will exit the system and it'll go uh, to a byproduct um, bin. Then we'll take that endosperm and we'll what we call purify it or clean any smaller bran pieces away from it before the clean endosperm goes to the reduction rolls. Um, it, uh, explain the reduction rolls a little bit to yep. me. So reduction rolls are uh, just two large metal rolls. They're grinding towards each other. Um, you, close the, you close them together. The endosperm um, goes through the center of them. And then you adjust your grinding pressure so that you can break that endosperm down into that fine powder that everybody knows is flour. So, it, it, OK, milling is, uh, is a science, obviously. It's milling and grain science. But it's also an art form as well, wouldn't you say? I mean, Correct. you have to have some where, wherewithal to get it to the right product. Yep. What, so what happens, what happens if it's a little uh, too tight on those rollers or too far out? Uh, tell what, what so can happen there. So um, there's there's always flour specifications that the millers are aiming for. So the the bulk of the flour is sent to bakeries um, across the U.S. and they have a specific uh, requirements for that flour. So the millers will will grind to maximize the amount of flour they can produce, and then they'll do a lot of blending um, to, to meet specifications for bakers. Uh, one of those, those specifications are typically your moisture, so it's gotta be below 14% moisture content. Um, protein is a big one, so different proteins on flours will make different products. Right. And uh, then your ash content, which is the measure of how much brand contamination you have in that flour. Okay. So take us on from the reduction then. So from the reduction system, uh, it, the milling system, if you would, you've got your grinding, your sifting, and your purification step. That's kind of what we walk through. Mm -hmm. um, and it just continues. You just continue to grind, sift, purify, or grind, sift, grind, sift, until you've reduced that endosperm into flour. To the specification yep. that whoever wants So then it. the flour is bend, and then the flour can be blended to meet specifications. Okay. Sean, thanks. That's uh, yeah. uh, I appreciate you kind of the going through that with us, sir. Folks, we have to take a break. Stay with us. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsor. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Tarwater Farm and Home has been family owned and operated since its beginning in 1978. What you need for farm and agriculture, lawn and garden, clothing and footwear, and so much more. You'll be surprised at what you'll find in this huge store. They have what you need and lots of it. So come take a look. You'll discover that customer service is first and foremost 
always has been with the Tar Waters. Tar Water Farm and Home, 4107 North Topeka Boulevard. I had this horse, it was a good horse, except for when the wind was blowing above 30 mile an hour. Wind was blowing about 35, 40, and I saddled him up, rode him out to the end of the lane, and I thought, well, he's doing pretty good. And about six jumps later, I was laying on the ground and thinking, boy, my shoulders sure hurt. I kept waiting, and it, it didn't get better, and so I went to an orthopedic surgeon, and that showed that I had torn rotator cuff. And said, well, I have to do surgery. I thought, I farm and ranch by myself. This is not going to work out very well. I'd been sleeping in my recliner for about two and a half years because it hurt too much to sleep in bed on my side. And I'd heard about Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center on the radio. and Got down there at 8 o'clock in the morning, and by 11.30, the procedure was all over. They just took some fat out of my side here and spun that down for about 45 minutes, and then injected it in my shoulders, and I was on my way. It's something you don't hear about, but I thought it was worth a try, and, and I'm really pleased. It's, it's really worked out well for me. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer, and with us we still have Sean Teeley, the operations manager here at the, the mill. Sean, we talked a little bit about earlier, that is, of the six classes a week that you can mill. Just remind us all what those are and what they're used for. Yep, so uh, the six, six classes of wheat are really broken down into uh, a hard wheat, a soft wheat, or a durum wheat. Um, with the hard wheat, you have a hard red winter or a soft red winter. Um, you've also got a hard white, got a soft white, and then your, uh, your durum wheat. So durum wheat is the hardest uh, of all the wheat classes. It's um, used primarily for pasta production. Uh, your second hardest wheat would be your hard red spring and your hard red winter wheat classes. Uh, those are going to have a higher protein content and are used for making uh, breads. And then your soft wheat classes, those are uh, going to be the lowest protein content. Um, those are used to make cookies and pastries. Right, OK, I'm getting hungry already. Yeah. But, uh, good to, to remind us of what those all are. Now, kind of changing gears here a little bit. So kind of tell us how this mill fits into the whole scope of the grain science department. Yep, so grain science and industry uh, has a lot of industry support, which is why you hear the, the industry on the end of the department name. Um, but the other, the other parts that make up the department would be the milling science um, and management, bachelor of science degree we talked about, and then also the baking science uh, degree and the feed science degree. And then the last component um, would be our IGP Institute, which houses our industry outreach um, and training for, for destined education. Now that, that aspect of it is not just, I, I think of extension when you think of uh, outreach and, and that sort of topic, but you're talking about international as well with IGP, right? Correct, the, uh, the big idea behind the IGP Institute is to bring the international uh, visitors and professionals in and give them training on U.S. grains and also the U.S. processes on how we mill to better educate them in hopes that we can uh, generate um, more export uh, sales of U.S. grains to, to other countries. Okay. Now you're going to be moving over, or you have a position over in IGP now as well, so kind of tell us a little bit about that. So I'm the, uh, currently the flour milling and grain processing curriculum manager at IGP, so I'll teach uh, flour milling short courses. Uh, there's uh, also distant education side for online courses at IGP. Mm -hmm. There's also a uh, feed uh, manufacturing um, specialist over there and a grain marketing and purchasing specialist at IGP. Okay, so for the time being though, you're wearing uh, this hat, the milling operations hat, and, and the hat over there as well. Correct. Uh, one of the great things about working at the university is you always get to expand <laughs> into different roles, uh, w which is that's, fun. That's, that's a good way of saying yeah. it. That's an opportunity, right? Well, there you go. Okay. Sean, really appreciate you taking time to show us the, the mill. You, this is a wonderful uh, educational tool. Folks, thanks for being with us. And don't forget, next week about the same time, we'll have another show of That's My Farm. See you then. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.